bloody, battered, and beaten, literally. We'll explain in just a second. Mark Rogers TV just a few minutes after South Alabama went down to Bowling Green in dramatic fashion in the closing minute, 33-28. to We allude to the incident on the South Alabama sideline with just about uh, five or six minutes left to play. South Alabama needing to drive the football to win the game. Uh, pass out to the South Alabama sideline. The wide receiver didn't catch it. He rolled over, kicked up his feet, and those cleats went right into the nose of head coach Joey Jones. His nose was gushing blood. It was red. It was inflamed. Uh, We're not going to comment on the coach's nose size before the incident. I'd have to check the videotape. Uh, Coach Joey Jones has joined us here on Mark Rogers TV for some excellent interviews in the past. Uh, We hope the coach is all right. Uh, He stuck it out for the rest of the game on the sideline. And uh, that white towel that he was using for the rest of the game was mighty red by the conclusion of this one. But I think he felt far worse based on what happened in the ensuing minutes. So let's take you back to the first quarter. Bowling Green came out ready to play despite... An inspired speech by Maliki Harris uh, of the uh, South Alabama football team. He had 17 tackles in this one, and he gave quite the uh, speech that they showed on the ESPN broadcast during the game where he said, uh, basically, let's take history. And what he was alluding to was this is South Alabama's first ever uh, bowl trip. Uh, The program just started in FBS football five seasons ago. They made it to postseason play, and we have chronicled right here on Mark Rogers TV the ascent of this program in recent years, taking on the big boys of the SEC and other conferences, and they made it out of the Sun Belt to this bowl game. So credit them. Let's get back to the story of the game. Bowling Green goes up 14-0. Uh, Really a difficult first half for quarterback Brandon Bridge of South Alabama. 4 of 14 passing. Not surprisingly, though, the Jags had trouble scoring. Down 20 to 7, their defense kept them in it because they're 107th in the nation in scoring offense at 22 points per game. But the offense did finally kick it into gear. Bridge found his target specifically, and I've got here on my notes, Danny Woodson, the sophomore wide receiver for South Alabama, with three star catches. That became a fourth star catch in the third quarter. So he made a great catch um, early in the second half uh, that set up a Demarion Buford Hughes 18 yard touchdown, which wasn't too shabby itself as he laid out for the touchdown grab to make it 27-21 Bowling Green. And then uh, Bowling Green came back on the strength of a Fred uh, Coppett 31-yard gain. He gained 65 on the night, actually 70 yards for Coppett. They had a halfback pass, pass interference against South Alabama that that set up BG, think of this, with a six-point lead trying to make it a two-score game, but they missed a chip shot field goal on fourth and inches. Could have gone for the backbreaker, but they missed the chip shot field goal, so it was still 27-21. Then, bam, I got it right here, dripping blood, Joey Jones, uh, the incident on the sideline. On the next drive, it was Woodson again, the sophomore, who came into the game with just 24 catches, made four spectacular grabs. This one high pointed the football over the DB for 44 yards, and that led to the go-ahead touchdown for South Alabama as they went up in this one, 28-27. to But it took just one play for James Canapi, who came into this football game with marginal season statistics, 13 touchdowns, 12 picks. But they really put the ball game into his hands. They couldn't run it much against the Jags. Their first 38 carries netted just 84 yards for Bowling Green. So Canapi had to throw it, and that he did. Again, 13-12 to TD to pick ratio during the regular season, but he was flawless in this one in terms of turning over the football. Two big touchdowns, no interceptions, and Canapi, the big one here. The play after they gave up the lead, 28-27, for the first time in the game, with 104 remaining, Canapi went up top to... Uh, Lewis, the fine freshman who has been phenomenal this season with 73 receptions. Ronnie Lewis, seven touchdown receptions, 73 catches for Bowling Green. And this was just a beautiful play up top, 78 yards, 33-28. Still had time to play, did uh, South Alabama with a minute. But uh, on just the second play from scrimmage, 
intercepted uh, right in the hands of Nick Johnson, but he deflected it, actually brought it up for the defi the uh, diving Jude Abjel Barama, the senior out of Columbus for Bowling Green, picked it off, and that pretty much wrapped it up. 31 seconds left to play. Uh, Bowling Green up 33-28. It should have, but South Alabama had its timeouts, and so the last 20 seconds went off the clock to about, again, 31 seconds, but South Alabama still had a chance, so they held Bowling Green to no first downs, and they had the three timeouts. They would have gotten the ball back with about 25 seconds left to play, so Bowling Green had the chance to either go for the first down and give the ball up around the 35 or 40 yard line of South Alabama, or they could have pooch punted it, or they could have taken a regular punt and tried to drive it inside the five or 10 yard line. That's what they tried to do, and they didn't even need to kick it because roughing the kicker converted the first down and ended the game. Unfortunately, we could have seen South Alabama give it one more shot. No timeouts, trying to drive the length of the field down by five, but we didn't get a chance to see that. Okay, let's spring forward uh, to 2015 and look at South Alabama and Bowling Green and what we can expect out of these football teams. So the Jags finished 2014 at six and seven. They're big playmakers on offense. Brandon Bridge, 14 touchdowns, four picks coming in. He's a senior. He's gone. All these guys are gone on offense. Hunter Vaughn, uh, actually, he's a sophomore quarterback. He backed up Brandon Bridge this year. One touchdown, six picks. He's got to get better, of course. Did complete 64% of his passes. So Hunter Vaughn, the backup, will be back as a junior in 2015 for South Alabama. Brandon Bridge, gone. Okay. Other playmakers on offense gone for South Alabama include Kendall Houston, who ran for over 700 yards and two touchdowns. Also, uh, Jay Jones, who was the leading rusher for this football team through six games, but then tore his ACL, unfortunately. He had a couple hundred yard efforts. And Chaveras Smith, who had 53 catches for eight touchdowns. He's a senior. He's gone. Offensively, the big uh, returning is Xavier Johnson, who ran for about 450 yards and a touchdown this season, and also, as we mentioned, Hunter Vaughn at quarterback. All right, defensively, uh, South Alabama loses a ton of big play uh, production on defense. Uh, senior Theo Rich, 12 tackles for loss, 8.5 sacks. Uh, Trell Brigham with 101 tackles heading into the bowl game. He's gone. And also Jesse Kelly, who racked up six and a half tackles for loss and five sacks before the bowl game. And he's gone. South Alabama with a non-conference schedule before they head into Sunbelt Conference play in 2015. Gardner-Webb at Nebraska and NC State. That's the deal for South Alabama. As Joey Jones needs to uh, replace a lot of production on offense and defense for the Jags. Bowling Green has much more production coming back on offense. Listen to this. Coming off 8-6 and six for the Falcons, plus this bowl win, they've got sophomore James Canapi, the, wide, the um, quarterback tonight, who's thrown 14 touchdowns this season. He's back. Junior Travis Green ran for 950 yards and 12 touchdowns this year. Ran for 1,600 as a freshman. He's back. Okay. Fred uh, Coppett, who ran for some of the big gainers and uh, had the 31-yarder, led the team in rushing tonight. He's back after a 760-yard season and six touchdowns. Roger Lewis, who had the big 78-yard touchdown to win it, 73 catches this year, seven touchdowns. He's just a babe. He's a freshman. He's back. Uh, Ryan Burbrink, who caught 64 balls this year. He's back. And uh, also Ronnie Moore, who caught 56 and five touchdowns. He's back. Listen to all that production. All those guys for Bowling Green are back in 2015. On defense, they lose their two most productive players on that side of the ball. Gabe Martin, 16 and a half tackles for loss and two interceptions. He's gone, as well as Brian Thomas, who had 13 tackles for loss and six sacks. Nick Johnson, who almost had the pick to win it, but actually deflected it to Barama. Uh, Nick Johnson with five interceptions, just a freshman. He's back next season. Listen to this non-conference slate for Bowling Green next season. This has to be, not that there's one particular team that's overwhelming, but as a whole, in terms of four non-conference games, this might be the best in the country. 
not just from a group of five conference standpoint, but in the country. Bowling Green next season goes to Tennessee. They go to Maryland. They play Memphis at home, and they go to Purdue. Alabama should play that schedule. <laughs> Tennessee, Maryland, Memphis, and Purdue for Bowling Green outside of the conference. So we credit Bowling Green for scheduling like that because if they can make it through the MAC, then they deserve consideration. But for this season, six losses, eight wins. They get the bowl win over head coach Joey Jones. We wish him well. And South Alabama as the Jags lose their first bowl appearance as an FBS school in dramatic fashion, 33-28. All right, South Alabama fans, we know that you're hurting right now, uh, but you got to be proud of your football team and this program. Uh, has a bright future. Talk to us about it as well as Bowling Green fans. Let's talk about it right here on Mark Rogers TV.